I didn't bring my rubber boots, Callan. I should have brought my rubber boots. You want rubber boots? <laughs> yes! Yeah. They match the floor. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> doing it for like eight years now, spinning painting. So I have a pretty good understanding of like what I'm doing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've gotten to a point where I, like it's, it's almost like a scientific method where I'll do everything the same and I'll just change, like tweak one aspect of it, like maybe the height of the swing trough or it's the speed, but like everything else is the same, the same pattern of colors, mm -hmm. the same speed, like whatever it is, I just change one thing. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, I've like kind of demonstrated that like I have control. It's not just all like random. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's still totally all random. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned the scientific method, mm. and that is so interesting to me because this is art, but this is it's kind of science first a little bit. No, because you've got you've got an apparatus here that you've engineered, yeah, and you've got a yeah, couple yeah. of different apparatuses actually. I mean, it's it's science at play. Like it's not. It's not serious science. Like they're simple machines. The most complicated thing is like the chaos and the fluid dynamics. Is a pendulum complicated? No, like that's a simple equation. Yeah. Is centrifugal motion complicated? No, it's it's a pretty simple thing. Yeah. But the results of the liquid paint interacting with those machines uh, can be quite outstanding. And, and there's kind of that mystery, which I like. If you see the piece on its own, mm -hmm. without the context of me explaining it with the machine and the performance and all that, if mm -hmm. you just see it like out of context, there's kind of like, oh, how is this made? How is this created? It looks like it just kind of naturally occurred. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. And then, but then- And I it kind of did, right? Yeah, it, it did, did kind of natural. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nature. And then I'm just kind of intersect, like the hand of the artist just intersecting briefly to like deploy the, the swing trough. Deciding when to start and deciding when to stop and what colors to put in. Like that's where the artistry happens. Okay, so you're kind of saying that uh, you're, it's, it's a little bit out of your hands, right? Totally. What was in, so what was in your control was building the whole apparatus and setting up the artwork to happen. Yeah. So, and then you kind of let go. Yeah, it's like, yeah, there's there's the parameters in which like I set up uh, like an arena for chaos to occur mm -hmm. and then I let go. It's not just like physically letting go, it's also just like letting go on kind of a more spiritual level. Like I'm letting go of control. I'm rel relinquishing my ego. I'm not painting it really. It's like, it's totally like hands off. Yeah. That literally the paint is just like flying through the air. So are you are you an artist of the machinery or are you an artist of the final products? Uh, I mean, you know, you, b both. This thing is like more like my main tool and for, for like a traditional artist, their main tool would be like a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. This just happens to be what my tool looks like and I've developed a on that with like the swinging troughs and like the pendulums and whatnot. No art is ever original, right? Because yeah. everything builds upon what came before it and like you, we can never say that our, our ideas are completely original. Like we, you know, nobody exists in a vacuum. No, yeah. And everything like, you know, is appropriated from something, from this, from that, whatever. Like there was that whole performance art movement where it wasn't even about the art per se, but it was about like how the art is made and this whole big presentation and like performance and how the art itself is even made. Mm -hmm. And like you, you kind of blurs the lines between what is what is the art actually? Like, does the art come before, like in the process of making it, or is the art like the actual finished project once the people have all walked away from it, right? So, um, which is kind of like what you're doing, really. But I think that the fact that you're transparent about your process, mm -hmm. it sells the story of your art, right? Yeah, and that is and that is the story, you know, that like, this is real for me, like the, the, the process is real and like that's why I share because like that's that is my story. Ultimately I think I think people like that. People I think people like the story behind something. Like, you know, whether it's a painting or whether it's a product that you're selling, like we're the creators, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really exciting for people to understand what this product is through the lens of the creator, that whoever it was that created it. Because right? you have more trust and faith in it, ultimately. And I think in terms of like the art component, I don't think it's art until the viewer is there, until it's shared. And that's why I'm really keen on performance art, because it closes that that barrier. And I don't load my work with meaning. I'm not like, oh, like these colors are about this. <laughs> and like it really means this for me. Like there's a little bit of that and like I but I, I'm not gonna fake it. Like it's not, that's not really my truth, but other people connect with it in that way. And I really wanna encourage that. And so I kind of keep it void of, of, of meaning a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's the sharing component 
where the art happens and, and I think a lot of the meaning happens. And, and in that way, I do rely on my audience to give the work meaning. <laughs> I feel like if people kind of understood what art can do and that um, it's like the starting of a story and then it's wherever you can go with that as the viewer. And, yeah, know, it you're can kinda... be inspirational yeah. and, and enrich life. And like, yes, it inspires me, but it's like more when somebody that I don't even know and they're inspired in their own life for whatever reason, like maybe they're an artist and they want to keep painting or maybe they do something different, but like they're inspired. And I think that's a really amazing thing that art can do. I mean, mm -hmm. it's abstract art. The thoughts are kind of abstract. If we could really talk about it and, and like write it down, we, we would, but the that we would maybe we wouldn't paint it then. Yeah, exactly. We're painting it because it needs to be painted. It's yeah. only communicated through that medium. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like the separate language. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, it picks up where language leaves off and, and, and fails, right? Mm -hmm. I have so much respect for artists, right? And I think when I really try to articulate why I have respect for artists, I think it's because artists stick with something regardless of whatever happens, right? Like you said, you've been at this for eight years. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing here is the product of like experimentation for eight years, essentially. Yes. And it's not that common that people will have that kind of grit. Mm. And so when you see somebody stick with something and stick with it and stick with it and figure it out and adjust and like work on something until it's amazing, I think that characteristic is so inspiring. What made you continue this for eight years? I like that it's a it's like my own path like it's a unique it's a unique path and I've always been a little bit different I'm dyslexic so I always kind of had to go about things a little bit differently in, in school and like learning and so it's very true to me to do it differently at the beginning the reason why I started the spin painting was was just in virtue of doing that like just to be different and that was where it began and ended it was like yeah. I'm gonna do something different just to be different yeah and also it's like I'm mining my soul <laughs> like I'm finding out who I am like every time I, I I do an art show or, or make a painting and I'm peeling away the layers of like the onion, really tapping into like, what's your essence? What's your DNA? Who really are you? Mm -hmm. And if you can really successfully do that, then then you win. You're self-actualized. Yeah, and nobody can tell nobody can tell you shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's nobody true. can tell you any like nobody nobody can tell you anything because you're you and like that then you you're providing the world with something that is that no one else can provide, you know? And there's a lot of a lot of things in our culture push us towards conformity and stuff. And I, I have to, I, this is the only path for me. Mm -hmm. It's my only truth and that's why I do it. So you mentioned that you're dyslexic mm -hmm. and we've been talking about school. So did you do well in school? Or how did, what was your schooling I struggled, like? I struggled all the way through, you know, like A++ in art, you know, but <laughs> everyone else is like, okay, here's your reading homework. And I would be okay. I have to like sound out every single word and then I read it and then I don't know what happened. So there's pros and cons, like I'm good at puzzles and, uh, and, and, th and thinking about th things in three dimensions. Cause I'll see a B and it'll look like a D or a P or a Q. It's like literally in th spinning in three dimensions. Oh wow. Yeah, and like that's uh, like an R can be an F. It's just cause they look kind of similar. Uh -huh. So like everything's like dancing on the page for me, but then I get to like this kind of stuff and like it totally makes sense to me. Mm. And so like in this world, you know, in paint world, I'm fluent and like a speed reader, you know? <laughs> so good. <laughs> this is a language that works for me and I've kind of, I'm like, I'm very fortunate that I found that. One of the first things you said is that it's chaos. Uh huh. But you you said specifically that you're trying to make something clean amongst the chaos, and you're trying to like have a refined sort of. You're trying to make the paint do refined things, mm -hmm. even though you have um, such a lack of control ultimately. Yes. And so I just find that so interesting because your whole aesthetic is very free. And really, like, you have to relinquish the control, as you said. Mm -hmm. So do you think that part of the attraction to your work is that people are able to perceive that you've been able to um, somehow find a balance between chaos and control, and the result is a, a very free, it's just very free, it's freeness. Like, you've captured freeness amongst um, chaos here in your paintings. Well, gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's like a dance between chaos and, and, and order. And, and I try to weave like a line through the chaos and that's the artistry of like striking that balance. It's a little little presumptuous to say that, but like the, the colors are flowing through me. Like mm -hmm. it's like, I'm just like a vehicle for them. They're their own thing and this is just the universe playing out and I, I, I kind of like help it along, coax it along. And if people see that, then awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so cool.